happy Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining my live today. We're talking about something that no one seems to talk about here on Instagram. And I was having this conversation with a client recently and she was like, I've never heard these things before. And I'm like, all right, let's just go ahead and talk about it. So sorry, my computer needs to a little bit there. There we go. All right, so we are talking about maintenance mode. We're talking about the period after the diet. I'm specifically, no, I'm not talking about the time spent before a diet if you are in a metabolic recovery. If you have a really long dieting history, hey, Sinead, thanks for joining in. Um, if you have a really long dieting history and you are in a recovery phase, this doesn't necessarily apply to you because you're still chasing that goal. I'm talking to you ladies, those of you who are either there or you are approaching there. Hey, Becky. Um, really just once you get the body, once you lost the weight and kept it off, once you did what we talk about all the time, once you actually did what we're trying to do, you are done gaining and losing the same 10, 15, whatever pounds over and over again. You want to lose it and keep it off. That is the end goal. I get it. That was the end goal for me. That's what I'm currently living. I got there. I got the body I wanted and I've kept it off. That's heaven. What if first, especially the first time you get there, you are just stoked. I'm not saying maintenance mode is bad. Maintenance mode is fabulous, but you just need to have realistic expectations. So let's say you get out of a diet phase. Maybe it was a really long one. Maybe it was short and aggressive, whatever. But at the end of that diet phase, you're like, yep, yep, damn, I got what I wanted. I look fabulous. That's what we want to happen. So then you get to start backing off on your training, tapering down cardio, and increasing your calories. Also fabulous. So you are looking fabulous and you are able to eat more, you are training less, everything you want in life is happening and it is just the greatest thing. So you enjoy it. But then you the reverse diet will stop because you're eating at your maintenance. You, If you kept eating more, you just gain weight and you don't want to because remember, you look fabulous because we got you there. That is the entire goal of the, what we're working toward. Tell my clients, we are not going for, I look good. We are going for, damn, that's what we want. So you get there, you get to start eating more food and then you're just so excited. Your jeans fit, you look hot in your tank top. Everything is going well and you get to eat more food than you were on a diet. Everything is good. And then the novelty will wear off. Then it is no longer new that you're in that body because it's now yours. It's pretty consistent. Then it's no longer new or novel that you get to eat that much food because that's just how much food you eat. That's just what you do. So it is so, so great to be able to be comfortable in your body, in your skin, Let's say 90% of the time, we're women. Some days we just have days. It's okay, that's, that's normal, that is human. Let's just say like 90% of the time, you are totally feeling yourself. You can wear the clothes you want, you feel good about what you see in the mirror. I'm not telling you it's not as good as you think because in general, it's better than you think because you get used to it. It is so cool to not even remember life outside of the you you created. That is so great, but when the novelty wears off. That's when no one talks about what actually happens. What happens when you've been in maintenance mode for a while? You're no longer chasing a goal. Hey, Erica, good morning. So you're no longer chasing a goal. You don't have that vigor that like, I'm going to lace up my shoes. I'm going to crush this workout because I'm going to get another pound down or I'm going to squeeze my ass into those jeans. Those goals that you just like are like deeply rooted in your being when you're trying to lose weight aren't there anymore because you lost the weight you totally did it so you're just coasting you don't have that like internal just fire where you just feel it in your bones need to just crush that workout because you're trying so goddamn hard to lose weight that's gone because you did it so then why are you doing it you, you don't have that tangible goal so you're just doing it it can almost feel mundane you're just you're just still you're, you're going to the gym you're, you're still doing your workouts you're maybe doing a little cardio maybe not maybe you're just walking outside you're still you know being mindful of what you're eating you're eating plenty you're not hungry but you obviously can't eat like a burger sweet potato fries a milkshake and a chocolate cake every night and expect to maintain the physique that you love so you just kind of get, it just turns into normal. It turns into mundane. So the danger is when people start feeling like, Ugh, why am I even doing this? I'm bored, I'm over it. So then you stop doing the things that got you the body in the first place 
and then you put the weight back on. And then all of a sudden, you're super unhappy, but you have a goal again. And then you have that vigor. You get that spark again because you're going for it and you have the goal. And then no one tells you every time you lose weight and then you put it back on to lose it again, it's so much harder. So then your journey is even longer. You have to have even more vigor. You have to fight tooth and nail even harder. And then you get there. You're like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm really going to keep it this time. I'm not putting that weight back on. And then like six months later in your reverse diet or you're, you're by then you're in maintenance mode and you are just kind of in the mundane. You get kind of bored. I'm just going to skip the workout today. I'm just, it work was hell. I'm going to have that extra two glasses of wine. You can convince yourself that you are now invincible because you've maintained the physique for just long enough where it is your now normal, but it can go the opposite direction. When you just get tired, you get, it's, it's kind of a weird place maintenance because you are, no longer at your very leanest. A lot of people talk about, a lot, like a lot of you probably watching and just follow fitness competitors. A lot of people who just like occupy the space of just weight loss and stuff, you kind of follow some of those competitors and be like, wow, wow, what does she do? Hmm. I followed plenty of those accounts too. And they talk about, you know, not being stage lean all the time. So they get to their leanest, they just like do their little fabulous, like shaky thing. I'm not sure. I clearly could not do that. So they do their thing and they're stage lean and then they do a reverse, a recovery. They like train hard and then they cut again. That's kind of the cycle. That is their profession for a lot of them or just their, like their passion. That's great. But stage lean is not something that is like unique to just competitors. When you lose weight, and you get to your very, very leanest. Maybe you were training for something. Maybe you have an event. Maybe you have a wedding dress you got to squeeze your ass into. Maybe you have a photo shoot. Maybe you have, I don't know, your cousin's wedding that you just want to look way better than her. Whatever. No judgment here. But you get there. You fit in all your clothes. You look great. And then you reverse diet. You maintain most of the weight you lost. Your, your physique is going to stay the same. Your measurements are pretty much the same. They might move up a skosh just because if you're eating more carbs, there's more glycogen filling up your muscle tissue. So that's just going to translate to a little bit of movement maybe on the scale and or in measurement. So when you're in maintenance mode, the things that does, no one tells you is you are no longer at your leanest. You don't wake up chiseled every single morning and the scale is not at the leanest that it was when you ended your diet. So I'm what, six months in maintenance mode right now? I think I put in my post on Monday. I should have read that. So ended basically August, we have September, October, November, December, January, we're in February. So I'm like in six-ish months of my maintenance mode right now. I am not at my leanest. I cut for that photo shoot that I did. Um, so I'm on average, depending on the day, four to five pounds heavier on the scale than I was when I took the photo shoot. Am I as chiseled? No. And that's okay. My clothes still fit. I'm eating plenty of food. Sleep is fine. Digestion's fine. I'm fine. Everything is great. But it, if you have literally lived your entire life chasing a weight loss goal and then you get there, you have nothing to chase. You are completely, completely caught off guard that you have nothing else to actually work for. And then you can start self-sabotaging. Maybe if you let yourself slip a little bit, you're going to put on some weight, then you get to cut again. If you're always constantly thinking about how to get to the next cut, you're going to just put yourself in this weird cyclone, even though it's intentional, it's yo-yo dieting and it's not a great thing. So real maintenance mode, what it really looks like is being able to be in a body that you feel comfortable. And remember, we're girls, we'll go with 90% of the time, no matter who you are, you're going to have some days that you're just not feeling yourself. That's fine. We're human. It's okay. But most of the time, it's great. You are in a body you love, you're eating a lot of food, you're just training with intention, and it's good. But if no one tells you that the scale will weigh a little bit more, your head's going to explode when that happens and then all of a sudden you're going to try to rush and cut your calories again and then just devastate your metabolism and or hormones just depending on who you are so no one tells you that the scale is probably going to go up at some point in your maintenance mode that's okay all of my clothes still fit and that's why i made the post yesterday just to almost kind of prove a point is i literally put on the sports bra and the leggings so you can see my stomach and compared it to what i was photo shoot day I look pretty much the same. I mean, barring the, the creepy bathroom lighting and the severe, severe lack of tan, severe lack of just any looking human, a little corpsey, but I'm the same person. If I put those side by side and said like, I took this this morning before my photo shoot and I took this during the photo shoot, 
No one would have questioned that because I look pretty similar. The scale is between four and five pounds more. No one tells you that. You can look pretty much the same, maybe just not as chiseled from every single, you know, uh, uh, angle. That's okay. So in a maintenance mode, to really prevent yourself from having to do the, I get put the weight back on because I got bored and now I get to cut again and I have a goal. And then I got bored and I put the weight back on, now I have to cut again and I have a goal. It's fun to have a goal. We like the chase, I feel that. But you have to fall in love with the process that got you there. Otherwise, you will never keep the physique long enough to enjoy it and actually get comfortable in it. So you can't fall in love with the chase. Yeah, you can like it, but you have to fall in love with how you feel when you do the things that got you there. How do you feel after you've gotten a really good workout? How do you feel after a couple days in a row of drinking all of the water that you're supposed to? How do you feel after a week of making really solid nutrition choices and making sure you're getting adequate fiber. Maybe you've embraced more greens on your plate, things like that. How does that make you feel? Usually in the check-ins I'm getting from clients are just like, man, I feel great. I'm not just talking about the weight loss ones here. I have plenty in maintenance mode, recovery mode. We're all over the place, which is fine, which is why it has to be individual. And no, I don't do cookie cutter programs. And no, I don't know how many calories you should eat if you just randomly DM me. I'm sorry, I just don't. I know what my clients need. So it's about falling in love with how you felt when you do the things that got you there. So if I decided I'm like super bored and I just, I don't know why I'm even going to the gym because I mean, I'm already, I, <laughs> I'm here clearly. So I'm gonna skip my workout. I'm gonna have some extra wine and it, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna eat a huge bowl of ice cream tonight. And then I'm probably gonna do it again tomorrow. I'm gonna have a ton of sweet potato. You just, you start letting the good habit slip you literally just don't physically feel as good. So you need to remember how you felt along the way to be able to successfully maintain. That is the goal and that is, it is awesome. It is so great to be able to just wake up and be comfortable in who you are and go into the closet. It's still a novel for me is being able to go into the closet and pick out something genuinely just because I wanna wear it that day. Not because of, I wonder if those pants are going to fit, or I wonder if that shirt's gonna be a little bit clingy around my midsection, or I wonder if that bra strap's gonna be too tight, or God forbid that those shorts, they, my thighs are just gonna eat those suckers like a snack. I remember those days. That's, that was my entire life, and now I've lost the weight, and I kept it off, and it is crazy to me that I remember, I think it was even like maybe a year ago, my brother made a comment. He's like, I don't even remember you not being like this. So you can get so far into your maintenance mode that this is you, this is your normal, and I'm not chasing anything right now. I am not at my leanest. I weigh more than I did at, at that photo shoot. I'm not perfect on my macros, and I don't always really wanna go to the gym, but I do it. I am intentional with my nutrition. You know you don't have to macro track forever if you don't want to. I like it, it's like a Tetris game for me. If I need to take a day off, I think I did like this past weekend, I take a day off. It doesn't completely derail me because it doesn't oppress me. But you have to fall in love with the lifestyle of being able to wake up, be comfortable in your skin, be comfortable in your clothes. The thought of maybe, <laughs> this is not a COVID thing, but like taking a vacation and that involves a swimsuit and not thinking, oh shit. It's not summer yet. I am not summer body ready. The fact that you could just do that year round is the <laughs> coolest thing in my brain. I think it's so great and I love it so much, but it still doesn't mean that it doesn't get to you and you see the skill and you're like, you're higher than you were recently. Why do you, what are you doing there? You have to keep objective. Why are you doing it? Don't let yourself slip because you are bored, because it is mundane, because the scale weighs a little bit more. You can maintain that physique for as long as you want, as long as you have some sense of consistency with how you got there. Again, you have to fall in love with that process. I really don't always want to go to the gym. And that's what I literally made that post on Monday and I was being fully honest. I just haven't really like felt it in a while, but I'm still going because I've never once regretted going. I've never once felt worse after a workout. I'm not talking about you guys who are really struggling with, you know, over exercising or, you know, you know, mental health that just really needs some professional attention. I am talking about just generally, I just felt like going to the gym. I just really haven't doing it, but I'm doing it. And I always feel better after because I know how I feel after. If I just stop doing those things and you know, I'm losing a little bit of vigor, I don't have a goal to chase, I'm not at my leanest. It's, I mean, it is cold as hell outside. We are frozen here. 
there's cars everywhere, but you can easily go down this rabbit hole and let yourself get stray too far away from what you know works. So that is the dark side of maintenance mode is the novelty will wear off. You do need to, I really recommend gratuity journals for everyone in the morning or whenever you want to do it, but just to remind yourself what's good what is actually going super well and i i need to remind myself that it's still novel to me that i could put on this shirt today and it not even be a second thought i remember when i got the shirt it was all snug and now i get to wear it and i'm like whatever it's a shirt it, i need to remember how special that is for me given my history and that can help keep that fire going you have to fall in love with the process and remind yourself why you're doing it because maintenance mode can be really boring and that's why no one talks about it on social media because we all want your attention and that's how you get your shares and your likes and all the stuff and somehow i keep finding myself talking about the really boring dark side of things sometimes that no one just seems to want to talk about but i entered all of these phases and no one told me and i had to do things wrong and figure it out so this is me telling you maintenance mode is awesome but it is not as exciting if you will as dieting because you're not chasing the new low on the scale you're not chasing the drop in your weight measurement you're not chasing getting those jeans back on you're not chasing a swimsuit you're just living so it can be a bit boring so that's when you really need to lean on falling in love with the process not the chase otherwise you will never be able to actually have a long maintenance mode Excuse me, that was lovely. So that's really what I wanted to cover with you guys. And I, this has actually gotten brought up on a couple of my um, onboarding calls with new clients lately is I do have an ebook that is all about how to lose the weight and more importantly, keep it off. So the stats are right around 5% of dieters. I think it's five. It's a very low number. Actually keep off the weight they lost. You want to be in that 5%. That is the 5% I occupy and the 5% I am dragging all of my clients into. Like, come with me. This is, this is the fun side. So I want you in that 5%. I want you to know how to keep that weight off. So instead of looking at the 95% of things people are doing wrong, I kind of mash together five traits of the most, five most common traits of the successful dieters. Five things that those people who lost the weight and kept it off all had in common. I put that into an ebook. It is free. So if you don't have it, shoot me a DM after this and I will send you the link to get that just because it's not about losing the weight and not keeping it off. It is about losing the weight and keeping it off. But after, but in the keeping it off phase, you just need to be realistic that it's not as exciting and it can be boring and you sometimes just have to do it anyway. And that's why falling in love with some of the process that got you there is so important. So if you guys have any questions, let me know, drop them in um, the comments. I promise I'll answer everything. If you want my free ebook on the five traits of the most successful dieters, the ones that actually kept the weight off, <laughs> myself included, what's up? Anyway. DM me. I'll send you that link. Um, hopefully you guys are having a great day. If you have power, good for you. If you don't and you're still watching somehow, I'm so sorry you're cold. It is crazy out there. So please just stay safe. Um, let me know if you guys like this. Um, it does help me to know if you guys liked it. If you drop a comment below like, hey, this was helpful or I think you're crazy, whatever. Just so I kind of know what to talk about. And if you guys ever have any requests on videos, just let me know. I do these for you guys. And I always come up with these based off of conversations I'm usually having with clients or interested clients asking me questions. So that's really where I get these topics. So if you have a topic that you feel like no one talks about, it seems to be a space that I occupy quite a bit. So just let me know. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for watching and DM me if you want that ebook about the five traits of most successful dieters. And thanks, Sinead.